We're here. Good morning. My name is Dr. Deborah Van Hook of Oakland, California, and I will be your moderator for this class. Today is Thursday, November 10th, 2022. You have been muted. Please continue to monitor your mute and video buttons during class. Welcome to this Zoom class given by some students of the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. We are a Zoom class of international honest-hearted truth seekers of Yahshua the Messiah. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh our Elohim and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern and plan operating throughout eternity until this present day. The school was established as the result of a divine vision and a divine revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year of 1931. The school was incorporated in the state of California in the year of 1958. Classes are held in Canada, United States, Bahamas, Jamaica, England, Ghana, Zambia, Malaysia, Australia, and certain other foreign countries. The host is Dr. Lenore Allen of Brooklyn, New York. In this school, we teach the true, correct, original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted with the title Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. Elohim has been improperly substituted with the title God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. Yahshua has been erroneously substituted with Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles, not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are lords and gods many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is the title that our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. Minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia will prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters in their alphabet that will produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English alphabet until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in his pure spirit state, he is incomprehensible, inscrutable, and indiscernible. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of, of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state on this Moses chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. 
Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, <coughs> pardon me, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name, Yahshua, and title Elohim may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, <clears throat> we teach by the pattern, divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses a top Mount. <clears throat> Pardon me. He called Moses a top Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in the vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court roundabout. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this divine threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. In this class, we teach the mission of Yahshua the Messiah, which was to fulfill the old covenant and to write the new covenant in our heart and mind by the preaching of the gospel. The 10 primary aims are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah, without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religion, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth is to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or the children of Yahweh. Ninth is to make known the Yahweh from the beginning, ordained that there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua, must be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And 10th is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is to speak the truth. We'll start this morning's class off with an opening prayer, a musical selection by Dr. Joyce Van Hook. Our scripture reading will be 2 Thessalonians 2nd chapter, read by Dr. Valerie Lewis. And our readers today are Dr. Jackie McCain from Chattanooga, Tennessee, and Dr. Lucy Altman from Abilene, New Mexico. And who will be reading the prayer this morning? I, this is uh, Jean Burris Robinson. Dr. Um, Jean Burris, would you please forgive me? I did not pronounce your name. Dr. Jean Burris will be uh, rendering our prayer. Our prayer, please. Brethren, let us all bow our heart or mind to our Savior, Yahshua, who was given to us through the Creator. Yahweh Elohim, let us 
be thankful that he has allowed us this opportunity to gather together and listening to the aims that were just read. I ask you to allow us, each individual, as much of the aims that we can absorb and understand at this time to be granted to us, knowing that each individual has his portion and his purpose. And with these words, I say, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, brethren. I thought of this song this morning because it was written by one of the members of our class many years ago, Dr. Laverne Collins. And I just thought of her this morning. Please just enjoy this song as I bring you forth in Yahshua's name. I have the love of Yahshua. I have the love of Yahshua. I have the love of Yahshua, and he's mine. Oh, yes, he's mine. Yahweh is real. Yahweh is real. Yahweh is real in my soul. In my soul, we have the love of Yahshua. We have the love of Yahshua. We have the love. Of Yahshua in our soul, in our soul. I have the love of Yahshua. I have the love of Yahshua. I have the love of Yahshua in my soul, oh, in my soul. Praise Yahweh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today's scripture reading for this class will be 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter. And I will be reading that out of the Holy Name Bible, containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts, revised by the late A.B. Katrina of the Scripture Research Association. 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as at the day of the Messiah is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, 
and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called Elohim, or that is worshiped, so that he as El or as the Almighty sitteth in the temple of Yahweh, showing himself that he is the mighty one. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things, and now you know what withholdest that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he who will now restrain will restrain until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom Yahshua shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, Yahweh shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be judged, who believe not in the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks always to Yahweh for you, brethren, beloved of him, because he has from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. Whereunto he called you by our evangel or gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our savior, Yahshua the Messiah. Therefore, brother, stand fast and hold the traditions which you have been taught, whether by word or by a, epistle. Now our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah himself, and Yahweh, even our Father, which has loved us and has given us an everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. That was Second Thessalonians, the second chapter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At this time, did I announce the that Dr. Jacqueline Kane from Chattanooga, Tennessee will be one of our readers and Dr. Lucy Altman from Albuquerque, New Mexico. And at this time, I'd like to turn this class over to our host, Dr. Lenore Allen of Brooklyn, New York. Good morning, everyone. I'm sorry that I was late today and I'm sorry that I wasn't around, was it yesterday? yesterday. Um, today, we're looking at 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter. And we're also going to be reading another um, transcript about the natural man. I was talking over with Dr. Um, Valerie Lewis yesterday, and um, we were talking about understanding what a witness is and running a, a, a train of thought. So I wanted to give um, I wanted to give uh, Dr. Valerie Lewis a chance to get into that, and then we can read the transcript um, any way you want to do it good morning valerie good morning frank good morning um yeah i mean if you want to read the transcript first you know that's cool too but um i was we were just talking about uh sometimes we have to be reminded um over in hebrews the second chapter it talks about uh well can one of the readers get that two and one Somebody there? Yes. Uh, Hebrew. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. Okay, so some of us are new and some of us have been around here for a long time. But the thing is, we come together to remind each other of what thus saith Yahweh. And that's important. It's not, that's what separates us from the rest of the world is the witnesses that are provided for us. We don't have to just blindly believe or you know, have blind faith or anything like that. We are guided by the sight and have a true understanding of what Yahweh is saying by lining it up uh, down through the law and the prophets and using the tools that Yahweh has given us. So we, therefore, we ought to give them more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. So the thing is, uh, and there's a, you know, I'm going to just kind of briefly go over a few things 
and over in Isaiah 8 and 20. That's one of our key uh, scriptures. Yeah. Also in the how Yahshua taught over in Luke 24, 25. Uh, also John 3 and... I'll get John and also I want to, I'm just I'm telling you this so you can, you know, maybe have the scriptures or something or write them down if you can't, you know, um, Psalms 19 and Romans 1, 19 and 20 are also tools that we use. And that goes along with John 3 and. Uh, and well, you're going to have to say it slower for the slow people like me. So okay. Psalms Sorry. 9, Psalms 19. Romans. Well, first we're going to go to Isaiah 8 and 20. You got that up there. Then we got okay. Psalms 19. Yeah. And then Romans 1, 19 and 20. Romans. And also John. 316. 316. <clears throat> uh, th well, pick it up at 12. John 3. No, and no, 3 and 11. 3 and 11. And then you also said Luke 24. 24. Yeah, Luke 24. 25, 25, and then so, skip down to 44. Okay. And these are. Uh, I just want to say that days. some people are going to be 70 years old very soon. So it has to be a little bit. <laughs> some I people hear you. are older than that. Okay. I'm, <laughs> I'm yeah, better yeah. tell them. <laughs> okay. Okay. So just, and, and, you know, I do encourage people to take these scriptures and read above and below and you know when you have time at home you know this is a school you're going to have some homework so we're but it's just we're trying to just run a simple line and show you how yahweh has chosen sh showed people how he wants to be worshiped over in john 4 23 and 24 i'm going to get also okay so let's start off with isaiah 8 and 20 please isaiah 8 and 20 to the law and to the testimony if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Okay, so Isaiah 8 and 20, this is something I was told, most of us were totally unfamiliar with prior to coming down to some of these lectures. To the law, I didn't even know what they meant by the law. So the law is the first five books authored, considered authored by Moses. And the testimony or the prophets are from Joshua, all the way down through Malachi. So it's making up the so-called Old Testament part of your Bible. Okay? And so if they speak, they who, they anybody, speak not according to this word, it is because there's no light in them. No illumination of understanding. You know, people can run around in the so-called New Testament part of your Bible and, you know, make you feel good. And, oh, I, he, he's love and he's this. But it's like there's no nothing solid behind it. The whole, all the scriptures, it says over in 2 Peter 1 and 20, that knowing this first, mm -hmm. 2 Peter 1 and 20, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Mm -hmm. That goes for us in the teaching or us in the school and also those in the world. It's of no private interpretation. And there's a reason why. You get, does one of the scripture readers got it? For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but so holy the prophecy man. came not in old time. You know, it's like it would be really good for us to just like um, Dr. Lenore Allen was saying, we got to slow down because, you know, there's so much in that moderation in and of itself. And mm -hmm. as uh, the prayer was talking about the aims of the school. You know, and we are here to uphold all the aims of that school. And every aim has scriptures with it. And it would be good if you're not familiar with it, get a copy of it. If you don't have one, we'll give you one. And go through those scriptures that go along with that, those aims of the school. That's what we're here for. You know, to help you find and know Yahweh. Somebody helped us when we first came down. Mm, and yes. to, uh, you know, so we're going to, and they're all, you know, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah. That's the only way that we're unified in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. So go through all those aims like it was stated in the prayer so that you can learn what we're all about or know what we're all about. 
So no prophecy of the scriptures of any private interpretation. But the prophecy because the came, prophecy, go ahead, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But the prophecy came not in old time by the will of men, but holy men of Yahweh spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of men. It's not just a bunch of us sitting around chit-chatting, you know, mm -hmm. or back there mm -hmm. chit-chatting. But holy men of Yahweh spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So these are inspired scriptures by the Holy Spirit. Of course, there's mistakes that man has tampered with and added things to and taken things away. But as far as all the things lining up, there's enough proof and evidence there that we don't need to be in a state of confusion. So the holy men of Yahweh, they spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. And that's what Dr. Kinley, he claimed to have a divine vision and revelation. And we're going to read in the, the natural man, the transcript. And he said he's getting sick and tired of telling people that, you know. And the thing is, you know, people want to drag in some, some stuff from the world. And this comes directly from the creator. And sometimes it's just refreshing to be reminded of where this teaching comes from. He wasn't trying to take credit for it and neither are, are any of us. So the thing is, we wanna make sure that we, you know, get that straight, that this is uh, holy men of Yahweh are speaking that they're moved by the Holy Spirit, if they're telling the truth. Right. And that's, this is talking about the scriptures, okay? Or the Old Testament part. So to the law and to the testimony, the first five books of the Bible are the, uh, from Joshua all the way down to Malachi. We're going to line up the scriptures and they're going to be consistent. So to the law and to the testimony, they speak out according to this word. There's no light in them. And it, that goes with anybody. Okay. And this is beautiful that Yahweh has just shown us how to go about to understand something. Mm -hmm. We were never shown that prior to coming down here. People like want to tell you their theories, concepts, and opinions, mm. TCOs, okay, for <laughs> sure. And we're not interested in your theory, my theory, your concept, my concept, or an opinion, mm -hmm. you know, because everybody has opinions, okay? So we got Isaiah 8 and 20. Now uh, go to the next scripture. Psalms 19. That'd be fine. Mm -hmm. Psalms 19. The heavens declare the glory of Elohim, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard, yet their message is gone out throughout all the earth, and their story to the end of the world. In them has he set a tabernacle for the sun. Okay, so the heavens are declaring the glory of Yahweh, and the firmament showing his handiwork. I didn't realize that. So this creation is actually speaking to us day unto day, utter a speech and night unto night show of knowledge. And there's no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Why is that? Because everybody can see the sunrise go up into its zenith sunset. And then, you know, it's like, so it's a cycle. And no, no matter what part of the earth you live in, you're going to see the same thing being preached or taught or speaking to you day and night do you see what i'm saying so mm -hmm. we do go to the creation the physical creation was created to show forth the glory of yahweh elohim and the firm and his handiwork and when you start seeing how things go together even your physical body and the tabernacle pattern that was given some 3500 years ago that is a witness to yahweh and to the things that we can know for an assurity about him to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. And get the middleman out of the way because that's just confusion. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay, so it's like that speech and language is heard all over the world. So the creation, and we have a green chart, it's called the green chart, and it says uh, the creator imaged by his creation. And then it breaks down different parts of your physical body and uh, shows you this, how everything's going by this tabernacle pattern. This is the green chart, the creator imaged by his creation. And it's just a, it's a great cloud of witnesses here. You know, and it's, uh, it says spirit, source, su I mean, substance, source, and, and, and law, eternity. And it has this big, long word there, philoprogenitiveness. And the reason Yahweh created all this, me, philoprogenitiveness means 
instinctive love of offspring. And if you have children, you know, they mess up sometimes, but there's that instinctive love of your offspring and you want to rear him upright or her upright. And you want to do everything you can make their life better than yours was. And you hear that all the time. So it's, and it's like, on all these charts, you're going to see there's a tabernacle pattern because that's a pattern of all things. So you have Yahweh Elohim here. You have the pattern. Then you have the migration of the children of Israel, which really paints our pictures. And then you have an atom. And then you have a cell, metamorphosis, seasons, universe, man. So all these things are really showing you something about your creator. And that's what we can get into this in minute detail. So the thing is, we, we do have witnesses. And over in Hebrews, the 12th chapter, it says that, that, that wherefore we're compassed about, uh, with a great cloud of witnesses, you know? So let us use the tools that Yahweh has given us. And it's like, we can go through in detail these things. But I'm, what, what I'm saying is I'm just showing you what's on the table, the smorgasbord that we've been given. Now, if you want to get into uh, any aspect of this creation, you can get into it. I mean, the metamorphosis of a butterfly is a beautiful thing. It's showing you, you know, it comes from an egg and it goes into a larva state. That, and you see there the, uh, the caterpillar. And then it goes at a certain time. And all the caterpillar can do is eat, eat, eat. It's in a death-like state. It's like earthbound, you know. Yeah. It doesn't reproduce in that state. What it does at a certain prescribed time by spirit law, it goes into a chrysalis. And that's what you have on that chart there. Mm -hmm. And it's like the way uh, my zoology book described it, it talks about it's does everything that's in that caterpillar is dissolved and rearranged. Mm -hmm. And it comes out as a glorified struck or creature. And it's that to me is so beautiful. And it even has to tarry, like Yahshua had to tarry when he came out of his tomb. He tarried mm -hmm. in making spiritual appearances. And then it's a, it doesn't eat the same things in that uh, adult state with the butterfly as it did as a caterpillar. It, it's, and that's the state that it reproduces. So it's showing you a death, a burial in the chrysalis, and then a resurrection. And then it, it's free. It's in the creation. And that's showing you, really, Yahshua went through a death a burial and a resurrection and there's life after death and so we can take any aspect of this and then the seasons of the year for instance this is a witness you go to his creation it's going to be telling you something about the creator you know it's like we're coming up to we're in the fall there's you know all the leaves are coming off the trees it's almost it's past peak here but there's beauty in death and you can see it when you look out there the colors it's like a patchwork quilt it's beautiful you know, but that's the, the trees are going into a dormant state or a death-like state. So that's showing you the death of Yahshua. And there's beauty in what, how he died that death for us. So there's death. Then we're buried, you know, some, we're here in the north, uh, east and stuff. Uh, we get snow. We're buried in snow for mm -hmm. a number of years. I mean, number of months, please, not years. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> And so it's like a death and a burial. And some places don't have snow. They have a lot of rain. So there's differences in the seasons. And then in the springtime, we look forward. I know I look forward to seeing those little crocuses. They even peek their heads out above the snow. And it's mm -hmm. like, oh, springtime's nigh, you know. So it's a death, burial, resurrection. And then there's a glorification when everything's in fruition in the summertime. So the seasons of the year, everything is repeating and showing you. Yahshua's death, burial, resurrection, and ascension. All of it's going together so that you can have a more clear understanding of Yahweh and through uh, Yahshua Messiah as he really is and actually exists. So I hope, I hope I'm uh, explaining things. See, the thing is, it's like, mm -hmm. um, so we have the Romans 1, 19 and 20. You're going to the creation. And then uh, Psalms 19 is just another witness to that that uh, the physical things are shown forth spiritual things. And they also John 3 and uh, 11. John 3 and 11. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak that we do know and testify that we have seen 
and ye receive not our witness. And that's the thing I just wanted to emphasize for new people to get to know the witnesses of Yahweh and for us older folks maybe that have been around for to not forsake them. You know, we keep, um, like it said in Romans, uh, I mean, Hebrews 2, uh, how does that, uh, don't let yeah, it you, ought to, you ought to give them more earnest mm -hmm. heed. There's an effort that's got to be put into this. Don't tell me you can't do anything. You ought to take the more earnest heed to the things which we have seen, uh, have been taught, lest at any time we let them slip. You know, sometimes things get so rote, you just forget about it. You know, oh, everybody knows. No, these things are precious. And it's through a divine vision or revelation at the end of this age that Dr. Kinley claimed he had that directly from the creator. And mm -hmm. he said, don't believe me, you make me prove it. And that's what separates us from the rest of the world. Right. And sometimes it's even almost hard to wrap your mind around it because we've been lied to so much. Mm. And, you know, people want us to believe. And then if you don't, would you think I'm lying? No, I want a witness. And that's your divine right. That's right. And that's why Yahweh's provided the creation. He's keeping certain things, you know, steady and, and, and true in the scriptures. He's given us enough witnesses so we can know. So we're going to be without an excuse. Okay, read that up. And, and, and we speak that we do know. And I don't want to hear somebody else. Well, I think it's like that. You know what? I had that in Roman Catholicism my whole life. I don't want that now. We're supposed to be born again in Yahshua. And this is what uh, the scripture in John, the third chapter, if you read it at home, is talking about being born again. So we speak that we know, do know, and testify that we have seen, and you receive not our witness. And then in 12, if I have told you earthly things and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? So this is Yahshua talking to Nicodemus, which, uh, who was a leader, a ruler of the Jews. And if mm -hmm. I've told you earthly things, because he was talking about being born again in the spirit, right. you know, how you're born physically from below, but you got to be born again from above in your heart and in your mind okay and except you do be born again like she's pointing here on the screen verily i say unto thee except you a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of yahweh mm -hmm. so we're not we're showing you the way because yahshua is the way and unless you go this way you're not gonna you're not gonna understand the things of yahweh you're not gonna understand the th uh, spiritual things so if i've showed you earthly things and you don't believe that how you can understand spiritual things you see okay. what i'm saying mm -hmm. and it's different than we've been taught all our life so just keep an open mind and an open heart to the things that yahweh is trying to teach us mm -hmm. through yahshua the messiah and the witnesses that he has given and um, i'm just going to go to romans 119 20. Okay. romans 119 because okay. that which may be known of yahweh is manifest in them for yahweh has showed it unto them for the now listen to these things. I know we read this every, almost every class. Um, but start it again, Lucy. And I mean, Dr. Altman. Uh, and read Romans, it again. Romans 119. Because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them. For Yahweh has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly being now this can, okay i'm sorry um i'm just uh cutting in to make a point i'm sorry to interrupt the readers because no, that fine. which that which may be known of yahweh now i was told you couldn't know anything about god until you die and down here we're telling you it's too late and here in romans he's saying because that which may be known of yahweh is manifest in them. So you can know something about your creator for Yahweh has showed it unto them. So do, do, we're not denying and Yahweh, I got different transcripts and different things in the scriptures where it talks about, and he's gave every man a sufficient amount of intelligence to comprehend the purpose. And the thing is, if you don't use it, then he's justified in sending you to the lake. So we're showing you the tools that he's given us and we've got to use them. 
So the thing is, he set it up that the uh, and because that which may be known of Yahweh, you can know something about him. For Yahweh has showed it unto them. It says, for the invisible things of him. What's the invisible things of Yahweh? And we go through. Yes, and we go through it in the moderation every time we have class. Mm. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state, he's incomprehensible, inscrutable to our physical, natural senses. He's the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything in the universe. Okay, so the the moderation is very important to listen to, not just to rotely go over. For the invisible things of him or the spiritual things of Yahweh, the wisdom and intelligence, the knowledge, the beauty, the love, the justice, you can see that in the cloud on the, uh, on the chart, Moses chart. So all those invisible attributes of Yahweh from the creation of the world are clearly seen. And you'd think that would be a contradiction. What's that? Are clearly seen. Right. Because you, you would think the invisible things, invisible means you can't see it. Hmm. And now we're saying from the creation of the world are clearly seen. So you're seeing it with the uh, your eye of understanding. Yeah. And then read on. Being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and supernal nature, so that they are without excuse. Being understood by the things that are made. That's what we were talking about on the green chart, for instance. The creator imaged by his creation. So it's even his eternal power and Godhead or supernal nature. His nature. So much so, he's provided the witnesses for us so that we are without excuse. And this is something I've been in the teaching for a while. And I never noticed that they has a, a, a colon after excuse. And we know in this school that what's written before the colon, there's an explanation or a listing afterwards. And it's like, so we're without an excuse because he's given us the witnesses. He's provided all that we need, the tools that we need. So we're without an excuse. And the reason you're without an excuse in 21, it says, because. Because that when they knew Yahweh, they glorified him not as Elohim. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Okay, so because when they knew Yahweh, you know, you can tell somebody about the name Yahweh. It's like, well, don't take away my Lord God and Jesus. The thing is, because when they, you, if you've checked it out, you can see the letter J is only 400 years old. So he walked around the earth plane some 2,000 years ago. We're just rounding it off. So it was impossible for him to have been called Jesus at that time. But people want to hold on to their Jesus, even though they know it's not true. And we don't want to be like that. We want to listen and hear the witnesses and see the, the proof of it. And then go with what Yahweh has given us. And Jehovah, you know, the Jehovah Witnesses have a beautiful pamphlet about the, the divine name shall endure forever. And it's like if they got witnesses upon witnesses that it couldn't have ever have been Jehovah or Jesus. Hmm. And they even have the tetragrammaton, the Hebrew uh, on the name chart, the tetragrammaton on different um, uh, cathedrals in France and, you know, different places, Brazil and Italy, you know, and it's just a beautiful uh, pamphlet. But as you know, they, they would go through all that. And then they still want to continue. Well, people are more comfortable with Jehovah. Well, we want people to get comfortable with the truth. Right. And Yahweh wants people to get comfortable with the truth, more importantly. So that we can see the witnesses on these old buildings and stuff, the tetragrammatons right there. And so the thing is, it's impossible for it to be Jehovah. It's impossible for them to be Jesus. And you can just look it up in your own dictionary at home. The letter J, the beginning of the J's, just look up where it came. It's the last le letter of the English alphabet. And so to me, when I heard that and, and checked it out, I was like, wow. So that just takes down all the theories, concepts, and opinions that I had about Jesus and Jehovah and, you know, and Lord and God are titles. They're not even names. So it's like, because when they knew Yahweh, they glorified him not as Yahweh. They thought they were smarter. Neither were they thankful. And I'll tell you, when I came into this teaching, I was very thankful 
just the, the name hit me the my first class and I was like wow I didn't even know Lord and God were titles and did I feel stupid yes I did but I was taught to you know you're taught to be stupid and then when you can check it out it's like it takes that that takes the wind right out of all the stuff that the sails you know what I'm saying but became vain in their imagination and their foolish heart was darkened so we can get into whole things, but, you know, don't get stiff and hard headed, you know, listen to the witnesses. Let us bring forth our witnesses. That's Isaiah 43. It's like, a, or Isaiah 43. And you can, like I said, uh, pick it up at eight. Isaiah 43. Uh, pick it up at seven. I'm sorry. Seven. Everyone that is called by the name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him. Yea, I have made him. So we're talking about the creator of this whole universe. Mm -hmm. He created you for his glory. Yep. So well, that's why, you know, we ought to be thankful, like it said over in Romans. But they weren't thankful. They wanted to hold on to their own concepts. And we don't want to do that. We didn't know anything prior to coming into class. We were told a bunch of different things. I found to be a lie what I was taught in my religious upbringing. So I am so thankful to come down here and know the truth. And the slogan of this school, the watchword is peace. And the slogan is what? Speak the truth. And slogan means battle cry or war cry. And there's a war going on. It's a truth against a lie. And it's been going on since the angelic. And, you know, you can get in. But the thing that makes us different is the proof and evidence that you can bring forth. Bring forth. And this is what we're going to read here in Isaiah. Go ahead. Hey, bring forth the blind people that have eyes and the deaf that have ears. Let all the nations be gathered together and let the people be assembled. So we're coming oh. together. All the mm -hmm. nations. Uh, yep. Now, on, under this side of the cross. There's, it's open to the Jews and to the Gentiles. So the Jews had a Pentecost there in Acts, the second chapter. And then seven years later, the Gentiles were brought into the fold. So they're now back under the old covenant was Jews and Jews only or the Hebrews, you know. So that now let all the nations gather together and all the people be assembled. Read. Who among them can declare this and show us former things? Let them bring forth their witness that they may be justified or let them hear and say it is truth. Okay, so it's like bring forth your witnesses. You know, it's like people are in the world aren't even used to proving anything about the creator. And it's like, here we are. Bring forth your witnesses. You want to say something about your creator and how we can worship him in spirit and in truth now? Bring forth the witnesses. You can speak the truth. That's our battle cry, okay? Mm -hmm. um, over in, uh, I forgot though. I mean, there, it's just so much, but uh, I wanted to just bring out a few more scriptures just to show you, this is how we operate. This is how it's, uh, you know, it's like we're told to go to the law and the prophets. And that's not, the, you know, it's consistent all the way down. Um, uh, Deuteronomy 19.15. For example, Zechariah 7, 11. So this is back under the law. And they even had standards or things that they had to do in order to let a matter be established. And these things that were written aforetime, we're, we're not told to do the law, but we are learning from what was written before time. Was written for our learning and our understanding. Okay, read. Deuteronomy 19 and 15. One witness shall not rise up against a man for any iniquity or for any sin. In any sin that he sinneth, at the mouth of two witnesses or at the mouth of three witnesses shall the matter be established. Okay, so it's setting up the principle that you have to have a, a, at the mouth of two witnesses or at the mouth of three witnesses shall the matter be established 
And like you look at the laws, one witness, the prophets is the second witness and the fulfillment, Yahshua came in to fulfill, not institute anything. You know, things were instituted back there under the old covenant to the Jews and the Jews only. But under the new covenant, Yahshua came in to fulfill or take that out of the way, nailing it to his cross. All that, the works of the old covenant. And if you're still continuing to do that on this side of the cross or after Yahshua took it away, then you're calling Yahshua a liar. So at the mouth of two witnesses or at the mouth of three witnesses shall a matter be established. That's why it's important to go to the law and to the testimony. <laughs> a little musical uh, entertainment. Zach Zachariah 711. What is that? I don't know. Someone needs to mute. Mute. We've done it. Everybody. Right. Okay. Zechariah 7 11. Zechariah 7 11. But they refuse to hearken and pull away the shoulder and stop their ears that they should not hear. Okay, so, you know, you can get, even get a visual on this, you know, mm. but they refuse to hearken. You know, you know, bring forth your witnesses. Let's see if it is truth. But they, some people refuse to hear. They pull away their shoulders. Can you ever see people putting their fingers in their ears? La, 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 I'm not going to listen. You know, and you show, they're show, pulling away their shoulders, stop their ears that they should not hear. Read. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. We, some of us might have even done it at one time or another. <laughs> Before we knew anything, of course. Right. Read on. Hello? Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. Uh, but they refused to hearken and pulled away their shoulders and stopped their ears that they should not hear. Yea, they made their heart as an adamant stone. Adamant stone. Adamant stone. Uh -huh. Least they should hear the law and the words which Yahweh of hosts have sent in his spirit by the former prophets. Therefore came a great wrath from Yahweh of hosts. Okay, so it's pointing out once again, you know, they made their heart as an adamant stone. It's just unmovable. I'm not going to listen. You know, a hard stone. Lest they should hear the law to the law. And the words which Yahweh has of hosts has uh, sent in the spirit by the former prophets. So they wouldn't hear the law or the prophets. And there's consequences to make for that choice that you made. Therefore came a great wrath of, from Yahweh of hosts. And again, I you know say read up above what we're getting into and read below. There is just so much. So we're going to go to the law and to the testimony. We're going to get witnesses for the things that we say. Even if we've been around a long time, it doesn't, you know, Dr. Kinley demanded people to get witnesses, you know, and there's like a, over there in Acts 17th chapter, you know, um, and I do want to get that Luke 24, 25, and then I want to go to Luke uh, 16 and 16, mm -hmm. John 1, 45. Luke 24, 25. Right. Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Messiah to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? Now, and who's speaking here? This is Yahshua. This is Yahshua speaking. And if you have a red letter edition, like shown on the screen, Yahshua is speaking and he's saying, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. You want to believe some hypocrite preacher, you won't even believe what the scriptures are that were inspired by Yahweh. Do you see what I'm saying? So he's mm -hmm. calling them fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Messiah or should not I have suffered these things to enter into my glory? And so what he did, you can see that it was red letter, those the 25 and 26. And what he did, actually, he didn't just say this. He did it. 27. 
and beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So he he actually went back to the law and the prophets. Moses is attributed to writing the law. Do you see what I'm saying? So Yahshua himself went back. And this is after his resurrection. And in his ministry, he talked about the law and the prophets also. So it's like he began at Moses. This is how he taught his disciples and the prophets. He expounded. That means to explain in great, great detail unto them in all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. Now skip down to 44. Verse 40. These are some these are scriptures that we get as foundation, you know, right. but don't just listen to them and not think about them. Think about it every time they're said, you know, or brought out. And this is also red letter. Read. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses, and in the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me. So Yahshua was saying, all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses, and in the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me. Read. Mm -hmm. Then opened he their understanding, that they might understand the scriptures. Yeah. So and then he opened up their understanding, that they might understand the scriptures. <laughs> so, and you know, believe me, there is so much beauty in all these things. But just listen and take it to heart. Okay? I hope, I hope I'm making sense to you. Now here, yeah, yeah. again, uh, do you get John 145? John 145. Uh, Philip findeth Nathaniel and said unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did right. Yahshua of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. So we have found him. Mm -hmm. You know, the one that the prophet, law and the prophets did write about. Yahshua the Messiah. Mm -hmm. So they understood some things in the scriptures. Because at that time, that's all that was written. And they went back there thinking they had eternal life. That's John 5, 43. Mm -hmm. Or 5, 4, 39. But it's also something to... You consider they went back to the law and the prophets they were you know uh well rehearsed rehearsed in the law and the prophets but they thought it testified of them it meant something to them but it was all showing yashua and here they're saying we found him of whom moses and the law and the prophets did right yashua of nazareth the son of joseph so it was really the law and the prophets are all pointing to yashua he comes in and fulfills the law in the prophets and then ushers in a new and living way and that's the new testament which is not written in words it's not it's written in your heart and in your mind so i uh you know you can get luke 16 16 but i want to uh, just give time to read the transcript too because that's really it's going to get into some of the things that we're talking about or have been talking about right recently so luke 16 and 16 Yes, please. the law and the prophets were until John. Since that time, the kingdom of Yahweh is preached, and every man passes into it. So the law and, and the it, prophets were till John. Moses was the first uh, writer, and John the Baptist, he was the last prophet. So law and the prophets were, were until John. Since that time, the kingdom of Yahweh is preached. And every man is pressed into it. And then you're going to go down in, uh, in 19. It talks about uh, um, Aaron Walker, the rich Aaron man and the man. Lazarus and the rich man. Yeah, yeah. And it's going it? to show the same mm -hmm. thing that we've been talking about. Go ahead and read mm -hmm. that. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at the gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. Okay, so it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. Mm. And the rich man also died, and he was buried. 
23. And in hell, he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. Now, if you know that, if you see the if you see and understand the tabernacle, this mm -hmm. this event, I mean, the story or this parable makes sense. And the the rich man was buried, and in hell he lifted up, being in torment, seeing Abraham afar off. So you can see in the tabernacle, the first uh, vessel you come to is the altar, you know, mm -hmm. and then it it talks about. So he's in torment, seeing Abraham afar off, and Lazarus is in his bosom. And that'd be likened unto the holy place. And that's where we were told to stand in the holy place. Um, and in hell, he's being in torment. Okay. Um, and he cried and asked uh, Father Abraham, have mercy upon me and send Lazarus. I mean, he's still trying to give orders, even <laughs> after he died, he was dead and buried, you know, because he was rich and powerful in, the, in his world, in this world. But in the next world, he's still barking orders. And uh, he is telling him, send Lazarus to dip his finger in the water. See, what's the next vessel you come to? Is the labor. Right. So he's in, so he can cool my tongue, for I'm tormented in the flames. So he's tormented mm -hmm. in the flames, that'd be like under the altar. Then he's mm -hmm. telling Lazarus to, you know, dip his finger in the water, because Lazarus is in the bosom or the holy place. Okay, read on. But Abraham said, son, Remember that thou in thy lifetime receive thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. Okay, so you receive good things in your life, and a lot of people walk around, oh, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, you know, because <laughs> they have things in the physical life, and they want to store up treasures in this world because they don't know what's on the other side. And we don't want to be fooled by that, you know. So the things that we're looking forward to, and we just read that uh, little pamphlet about, you know, this whole teaching gives us something to look forward to throughout eternity if we mm -hmm. are obedient. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so he's saying, remember that in your lifetime, you received good things and Lazarus didn't, you know, evil things. But now he's comforted and thou art tormented. Read. And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fit. Now, besides oh. all that, there is a, between you and where Lazarus is and where the rich man is, there's a great gulf fixed. There's a great gulf fixed between the old covenant and the new covenant, between physical things and spiritual things. Okay. So that. So they, that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us. That would come from then. Okay, so the time at that time, because they took it taken off the flesh, as long as we're in the flesh and we have a willingness to learn and understand something, you have hope. Yes. But if you want to be stubborn and stiff necked and just believe what you've been taught all your life instead of uh, looking at receiving the witnesses, and that's what was in the scripture reading, because they received not the love of the truth, Yahweh's going to send you a strong delusion that you might believe a lie. Yeah. And I think Dr. Kinley, I mean, one, one class, he and might maybe more than that, but he talked about this is your last day to be saved in Jesus. Why? Because you can check that out. And if you refuse to do that, want to hold on to your Jesus, he could send you a strong delusion. You're just keep on believing that. And when Yahweh sends you a strong delusion, that's something mm. to be very concerned about. Okay. So mm. the things that we're telling you are, are we're just trying to encourage people to open up your heart and mind, receive the witnesses, receive the love of the truth, so that you might, so that your soul might be saved. Yeah. Okay, because you want to get past the, the great gulf. You can, you can understand something about the new covenant now. After the consummation, after you've taken off the flesh, it's eternally too late. So this is the time to learn. This is the opportunity, and we're thankful to have this opportunity. Yes, so there's a great call fixed between them. Mm -hmm. Read. So that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. 
Or no, I he's asking fire. him, well, go tell him, well, if he can't give me some water, you, you know, go tell him to go to my father's house. Why? For I have five brethren that he may testify unto them, least they also come into this place of torment. So they, he has five brothers that he makes the six. So he's saying, well, go, let him go talk to them unless they come into this place of torment. Read. Abraham said unto them, him, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. Now that is powerful. <laughs> yeah. Abraham's talking to him and say, they have Moses and the prophets. The same thing we've been telling you and lining up the law and the testimony, the law and the prophets. Let them hear them. And what's he say? And he said, nay, Father Abraham. Oh, we, we can't do it that way, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, listen to it. You know, people, you know, oh, just don't take away my Christmas or my Jesus or my this or my that. You have fond memories of things. But if it's not the truth and you're going to lose your soul over it, it's very important. So he's going, no, nay, Father Abraham. But if one but of if them went, one, go mm -hmm. ahead. But if one went unto them from the dead, they would repent. And he said unto him, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though mm -hmm. one rose from the dead. <laughs> okay, so it's like, they won't even be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. And one so if they can't hear the law and the prophets, you know, and he, you, you don't see, it's like Yahshua rose from the dead, a quickening yeah. or a life-giving spirit. So it's like these things are all pointing to Yahshua the Messiah and you, all the law and the testimonies. This is the one that they said that they found him, whom the law and the prophets did right, mm -hmm. Yahshua of Nazareth. So you've got witnesses all the way through with the law and the testimony. And then somebody wants to drag it a bone that they heard down at church and stuff or something in the newspaper or something in science or something and bring that in and don't have a witness in the scriptures at all. And we're supposed to take time to listen to that? Uh -uh. We've been hearing that all our life. I'm not going back to Roman Catholicism. I hope you're not going back to wherever you came from. And you want to demand witnesses of each other. And it says over in, uh, what is it? Well, the scripture reading talked about, uh, let no man deceive you by any means. You know, you might like the person. They might, you know, come across real nice and stuff. You know, I don't think my minister would lie to me. Well, if he's not going to law and the prophets, He's not teaching the way Yahweh, what thus saith Yahweh, then he's going to, that's a, that's a false prophet. And this is how we know we can discern and avoid being deceived our aim, uh, aim there, you know? So it says, let no man deceive you. This is second Thessalonians two and three, let no mm -hmm. man deceive you by any means. So it's like in that mystery of iniquity or that Satan and his demons have a lot of ways to persuade people into doing something. Well, I think you should be nice. And I think you should do this. And I think you should, you know, you know, everybody thinks they should be a nice person and you should be, but that's not unto salvation. And that's not what thus say it's Yahweh necessarily, you know? So the thing is like, let us not bring in our theories, concepts, or opinions from the world and try to incorporate it into this and just hold fast. It says over in second Timothy, the two and 15, I'm just going to read it. Study okay. to show thyself approved unto Yahweh. Mm -hmm. You know, not unto each other. We want to be approved unto Yahweh. A workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth or the dispensation in ages. And it's so important because what happened back there with the children of Israel, it's not prevalent. Yahshua came in and fulfilled it. So that's we're now we're supposed to be worshipmen in spirit and in truth. Mm -hmm. And then in 2 Timothy 3, um, Three and the fourteen. Mm -hmm. You're saying, but continue but thou in the things. Go ahead. Go ahead. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of. Knowing now, of we things. want to continue on. And that Timothy was taught from his mother and aunt, and that's in the first chapter of Second Timothy, uh, Eunice and uh, Lois. That's it. So it's like he's. But continue thou in the things that you have learned and been assured of. Of whom you have learned, read. Mm -hmm. Assured of knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Yahshua the Messiah. 
they're from a child. See, I was saying yeah. that, that's in uh, Second Timothy one and five. You mm -hmm. know, so we want to remember those things and continue in the things that we've been taught from Yahshua the Messiah, and continue in them and know the scriptures, the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith in Yahshua the Messiah. Yeah. They're able yeah. to make you wise unto salvation. Read on. All scripture is given by inspiration. This is King James Version. Well, in the holy all, name, it says all scripture that is given. Because not all, all things scripture. that are written down are under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so all, all scripture, scripture that is given mm -hmm. by inspiration of Yahweh. Read. Is profitable for doctrine. For it's profitable for doctrine. Read. For reproof. For reproof. You can prove and prove again. Read. For correction. So it can correct us. You know, it's like if you're doing something and like somebody gives you the witnesses down through the law and the prophets, the scriptures. It's like that, that's not what Yahweh, Yahweh loves. And you can find out what he hates over there in the Proverbs 616. You know, a lying tongue. Uh, those that shed innocent blood and you can run that all the way down and it's beautiful these six things does Yahweh hate yea seven are an abomination right. so we want to find out what, what Yahweh loves and what he doesn't like so it's like for correction and if I was you know doing something that was wrong and I'm if you can be corrected from the scriptures so that yeah. those that are they're profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction read for instruction in righteousness so it can instruct us in righteousness mm -hmm. to do what? That the man of Yahweh, of Elohim, may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So that the man of Yahweh might be perfect, thoroughly furnished. You got everything you need. Just use the tools that have been given to you unto all good works. So I hope you got something out of it because that mystery of iniquity, as, as it said in the scripture reading, it's going to try to throw things at you. But it's like it says over in Second Thessalonians, I think it's uh, 1 and 21, prove all things and hold fast to that which is good. First yeah. And so we can actually do that now. We can see it. And if somebody comes to you with something, at least give them a witness, you know, get a witness for it. And uh, like uh, the dean in New York used to say, a cogent witness, something that can is solid, something that will really hold together you can look up the word cogent if you want but so the thing is like prove all things and hold fast that which is good so when i came into this teaching i brought my little bible that somebody gave me when i first came in and i went back to saint rosa lima school in north, north syracuse new york and went and talked to father murphy and i asked him if he knew the name i went to your school this catholic school for eight years and he knew it right away. And I go, why didn't you tell me? I went there eight years. A good part of my life. Oh, it's not that important. I just handed huh. him my little Bible and said, can you show me where that is in the Bible? So he's, you know, they're preaching their theories, concepts, and opinions is my whole point. So we want to hold fast to that, which is good. Yeah. And I hope, uh, you know, it kind of guided us in a way. And there's so much more, of course. But stick to the things that you do know and can testify that you have seen in with the witnesses. And that's the great cloud of witnesses we want to see. So I'm going to turn it back over to her, or whatever we're going to do. Back Hallelujah. Me. Praise Joshua. I'm sorry it took me. so long. Enjoy Excuse, it. Excuse me, Dr. Lewis. Uh, did you want Hebrews, the 12th chapter also, to go along with what you were saying? No, I think we want to get into the transcript now. People, I, oh, okay. I quoted it in uh, just, uh-oh. Um, I don't think that's the right one, Lenore. Okay, which one is it? It's uh, The Natural Man. It's just called The Natural Man uh, by Henry Clifford Kinley, 1970. Uh, okay, all right. I know that one. I think that one is a different one. 19 what? 70. Okay. All right. I'm looking for it. Okay. Me too. Okay. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, is 
1970. Yeah, 1970. Okay, let me see. Word. Well, good morning, everyone. Yes. Uh, we got about Go 40, 40 minutes left, and uh, I, I was just wondering, since we've gone through that, if uh, if our sister Tracy Robinson has any questions, because sometimes when you're in the school uh, for a while, you might still have questions about something, mm -hmm. and uh, and then we can use the witnesses to prove something or to help out. You know what I mean? Okay. But it's up to her. Because when you're just coming for so many weeks, yeah. uh, and you've had a whole lifetime in the church, <laughs> right. you never know. Uh, I know I was blessed because uh, I had to uh, uh, um, I had somebody uh, that I worked with and she never got any chance to uh, do her planning for physical school because I'm asking her questions all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Private tutor. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, it's okay. Don't want to put her on the spot either. Oh, wait a moment. Okay, I'm still looking. So if anybody okay. gets it, throw it up there. And what? So what's the name of it? Let me write down for sure. What's it? What is it? The natural man. Natural man. And it's and that's all. Yeah. 1970. Okay. All right. Where is this baby? Uh, okay. 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 Pattern. Uh. I'm sorry, I didn't know it was so hard to find. No, 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 it's not. I'm, I'm slow. No, no. <laughs> Wow. And I'm looking at the pattern of everything. Mm -hmm. And and it says natural man can't believe, but that's it, not it, huh? No. There's two of them. I mean that's one. And... It says okay. this one has 27 pages. That's a pretty long one there. Okay. Anyway. I think it was in something called the Wisconsin book at one time, which I don't have. Okay, wait oh, a moment. Let me check. Okay, it. let me see. No, it's well, not. Oh, no. Well, I'll tell you. When I was beginning, just to read the beginning of this one, what you were talking about, like, you know, that he's been teaching for thirty-five years, and that you should get um, witnesses, and he doesn't appreciate people coming up in his face. He's saying that in the natural man too. Okay, so wait a moment. Well, it is in the Wisconsin book. Okay, Wisconsin book. They all they put Yahshua only mediator or the natural man. Nineteen seventy. Okay, Yahshua only mediator. Okay, let me try that. Thanks, Marie. Yes. You're yeah, welcome. Thank you, Marie. Yeah, why don't you put it up, Marie? I, I don't have that one. I, I that was one when I tried to open it. Says you can't do it in this format or something, and I you lost. Get, you can't get there from here. No, I don't. Gone. <laughs> okay, I've, I okay. I found it. 
Okay. Ugh. I don't like the format. Okay, wait on. Let me see. I am so spoiled. Aren't we all? Oh, I hope. Come on, somebody asked a question. I don't like all this dead air. Well, Hebrews 12 chapter was good to read. Go ahead, read it, please. Lucy, please. Okay, I found it. Yourself. Okay, I found it, I found it. Now I just gotta do this. Okay, wait a moment. Wherefore, seeing we also are come past about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin, and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Yahshua, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of Yahweh. I thought that was beautiful that Apostle Paul was saying, we are come past with so great a cloud of witness goes along with what Dr. Valerie Lewis was saying. And also in the textbook where the founder said, Isaiah 8 and 20 is a divine chastisement. And also in the scripture, it's talking about chastisement too. That's all um, I wanted to say. I got it. Does everybody see it? Yes. Okay, who's reading? Can you see it? Yes, yeah. it's nice too. Oh, I'm sorry. I started so reading. Is I didn't Yashua know I only mediator uh, and not uh, the natural man, correct? Well, they had they have a name under different things. So I think it's what should it be, natural, Yashua only meteor, and also the natural man? Yeah, that's what they have in the Wisconsin book that they put together. It's the same one. It's the though. same transcript, though. Yeah, they just changed the name. Can't please everybody. They okay, have both so you, names on it. Just try, and I'm just trying to understand. Thank you. What I'm yep. writing down. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're welcome. And uh, Lucy, can you see? Yes, I can. I started reading it and I didn't realize I was on mute. <laughs> I started okay. reading Hebrews 12. I was on mute. So. <laughs> okay. okay, Yahshua, the only mediator. Lecture given by Dr. Kinley in 1970 in Los Angeles, California. Okay. Dr. Kinley, thank you ever so much. I'm always glad and happy to bring unto you the that I have received from our father, Yahweh. Now, I did tell you that I would deliver a special sermon, one that you need to know something about. Now, if you noticed, I pinpointed that by saying a special sermon, and I requested you to go to all of them that you know had been in this school from one time to the other and that are now delinquent and try to persuade them to come back. Now, if I attempted to give that message tonight, then what I would have to do would be to repeat it. I would to Yahweh that you, all of you, got around to the place most particular in this year, 1970, where you could learn one thing in particular. As Yahshua the Messiah said, now you listen to what I'm saying. He said to the Pharisees and to the scribes and the Sadducees and Zealots, in other words, he said to the 70 who had followed him around first one place and the other and observed what he'd done and his disciples. And they saw that he did perform things 
that none of them could and no man had ever done. Now they saw that. That was expressed by Nicodemus when he said, Rabbi, or master, said, now we know. Now who did he have reference to when he said, we know? Well, let me tell you who he had reference to. He had reference to the Sanhedrin Council that was composed of Nicodemus himself and John. No, I'm not talking about John the Baptist and whatnot, and Gamaliel and quite a few of them. In other words, it was 70 of them altogether that belonged to that council that they held up at Jerusalem. And on that council, they were the characterized as the masters of Israel, the teachers and instructors of it. Now it originated from this 70 back here. And while I'm on that score, that was what the papacy has tried to do was to appoint cardinals and whatnot and bring this number up, you understand? When they die off, or for some reason you know, that it becomes incomplete or inefficient, and it necessitates an appointment of some more cardinals. Now, cardinals are way out next to the Pope. So then what they try to do is keep that advisory council and that instructive council they try to keep it up to par. And that originates from the idea of these 70 elders back here and the Sanhedrin Council. See, in other words, it's a copy. I want you to see what I'm talking about. Now with that clan, Nicodemus was one of them. And he went to Messiah by night and he said, now look master, we know. Now you see who the we is? It's the Sanhedrin Council. Said, now we know that you're a teacher. Said, we know that. You're a teacher come from Yahweh. Well, how do you know that? Well, said, because no man can do the miracles which you do except Yahweh be with him. Now that's something we know it. I'm sorry, now that's how we know it. Now let me tell you something about the miracles. See, he went around and healed the sick of all kinds of diseases. Didn't make no difference what kind it was. And all kinds of miracles he performed that the Sanhedrin Council, they had to recognize, even though they did not wish to endorse him. See, but they had to recognize the fact that, you understand, Yahweh was with him. Said, now we know it because no man could do the miracles which you do, except Yahweh be with him. Now I said that to say this, out of all the doctrines and the false illusions and all, now Israel had quite a few of them, false teachers and false prophets. They came along and people followed them off, and that work come to naught, it went down. Now in this school, as I have tried my best to point out to you that I can't do nothing. And I, I'm no smarter than nobody else, you understand? I'm just as Paul said, be as I am. Well, why do you want me to be as you are? Because I am as you are. Now that's why I want you to be like me, is because I'm like you, the Messiah himself. Uh, the glitch in the tape. He said, now I can't do nothing. My father in me, he doeth the work. Now here's the cardinal point that I want to bring out that he said. Now Nicodemus called him master, rabbi. And quite frequently, somebody would run up to him of that Sanhedrin council and try to interrogate and catechize or ask him questions because they wanted to show him how smart they were and to trap him in his words or to make a fool out of him. Well, now listen to what I'm saying to you. Every last one of them, he could perceive, he could perceive why they asked him that question. And the question was an attempt to tempt him. You understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. And they thought they were hid now bear in mind that there is people that come from every walk of life into this school. 
and they want to when an opportunity presents itself to ask some kind of a question. And it is not all the time that they seek information, see? It's not that at all. They don't want to know. But for you who don't know the difference, I want to let you know I do. I don't care how humble you try to appear in your presentation. I got your number. Now, my reason for saying this, I'm going to make it clear. My reason for saying this is, now, if I am, as Messiah said, why do you, why do you call me Lord and Master? I'm putting it in the King James terminology. Why do you call me Lord and Master and then do not the things I say? All right. Get it? Now, for example, we'll say this so you can catch on. Now, if we say we'll have a meeting, a special meeting for your special benefit, you see, where uh, the apostle says this. I'm sorry, I'm hearing a lot of uh, rumbling and moving around. Whereas the apostle says this, forsake, he's not talking, he's talking to the Jews too in Hebrew. Forsake not to assemble yourselves together as the manner or custom of some are. Now listen, as the much more said, now listen, and the much more as you see the day approaching, said, now don't forget to, don't forsake to assemble yourselves together as the manner, as the manner of some is, and the much more you see the day approaching. Now get the thought. Now I'll tell you, see, come on down, bring your friends, bring your enemies. Let's fill this place up. You've been sitting and listening all the time. Well, now look, when I say that to you, see, you can take it with a grain of salt. And then you don't know no better than to come back and hand me or somebody else some flimsy kind of an excuse for disobedience or don't obey the commandment. Do you all understand what I'm talking about? Do you see through what I'm talking about? Now, I have told you this. I told it to you. I don't know how many times until I'm getting sick of it myself, getting good and sick of it. I told you that Yahweh Elohim caught me up to the third heaven, and I saw things, I heard things. In other words, as the Apostle Paul said, I come to visions and revelations, and it is hard, irrespective and irre and regardless of what language you speak, of what language you speak in to impart it, the clear, concise understanding to someone else. And that's a hard thing to do under any conditions and circumstances. All right now, with that being the case, and I've asked you to sit back there and be quiet, keep the children quiet. Now, Nothing is not going to be revealed to you and you just sitting up there chewing gum and nudging somebody else and whispering all around and patting your feet down against the floor and all them different kind of things. Now, I know what I'm talking about. Now, when we impart all them instructions to you and tell you all them things, you should take heed. Now, one and another. Now, one other thing I want to mention here before I go any further is, now, if I've made a statement like that, now you ought to at least sit there and listen to my story to see. Now, that's the way the Corinthians did, the Grecians did. They sat and they listened, and they expected to hear some babbler come along and say something, you know that they hadn't heard nothing about before up at Mars Hills and Athens, Greece. And they were noted philosophers, see? And they'd sat there and give your attention. I mean, give attention to what you said. Now, listen, folks. Now, we talking about having the Holy Spirit, knowing how to conduct and to behave ourselves in society. Some of us don't even have good manners. That's right. 
we just don't have good manners, not manners enough to know how to conduct yourself in the congregation of the assembly. Now, you may want to abuse me for saying these things, but now if there was, if there ever was a time when you should give heed to the things which you hear, as we said again to the Hebrews, lest at any time you let him slip and some root of bitterness bringing up in somebody. These offenses must come. Some root of bitterness bringing up in somebody, whereby many be defiled or corrupted. You see what I mean? Now, if you that come here all the time, you understand, if you're going to jump up and say, well, look, I don't think Dr. Kinley should have said this or that, or said that or said the other, you see, because thus and so forth and so on, or for some reason. You understand? And you're paying it a lot of time, and you're saying it a lot of times to show some new person or some big, see? Then if you're going to bring an accusation against me you get the point because i discern them satanic spirits incarnated in physical bodies and try to warn you about it well what do you expect from the other fellow if you're going to do it now do you see through what i'm talking about now you're supposed to be my helpers I want to mention something else to you that I think is absolutely necessary. I'm going to repeat it. I said it many times. There is no one in this building, not a one, from nowhere, but what, what hasn't been indoctrinated in some kind of a religious concept. Everybody has. Somebody said, not me. Yes, you. You may not realize it, but you have. Satan indoctrinates everybody with something. Well, you say, oh no, I'm an atheist. Well, you're just unaware of what's going on. You see, get the point? Now, somebody in these days in which we live in now, now you listen to what I'm saying, they've been out here and they've got in these different organizations that's come up in front of here in the last few years. And now here they come running in here, you understand, telling me something about somebody else off somewhere, you understand. Now you expect me to go along with that. Now listen, folks, if I did, if I went along with it, then I would deny my calling. Now, why would I say that? I just got done telling you that Yahweh caught me up there. Now, if I'm going to go along with you, then I'm a liar if I say he caught me up there. Now, when Yahshua the Messiah come along, he told the Pharisees and scribes and them, said, Now, I didn't come to be ministered unto, but to minister. Do you understand? Now, why should I sit down and listen at your long, drawn-out story about some hypocrite preacher or some so-called, do you understand, theologian? Why should I? Why waste my time with that? You get the point? Listen, I'm unconvertible. See? Now, that ought to, that at least ought to clear out some of it. Do you understand what I'm talking about? You can't convert me to nothing. See, somebody want to come along and tell me what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said and junk. You see what I mean? Now listen, it is claimed that he is a reincarnation of the previous Elijah that ascended in a chariot of fire and threw his mantle back on Elisha. Now listen at what I'm going to say. He can't tell me nothing. You get the point? Now, if that real Elijah back there can't tell me nothing, what do you think I think about somebody talking about they're the reincarnation of something? Want me, want me go head on and throw that on out some 
so you can see it. Moses can't tell me nothing. John on the Isle of Patmos, he can't tell me nothing. I'm trying to discourage you from trying to, so you can save your time. Now, why did I say that? Because the self same Yahweh is in me that is in everything else. And that's what's in all the rest of you. Getting quiet in here. Getting awful quiet. Now you bear that in mind and respect that and you'll do well. And it'll kind of open up your eyes to a few things. Now I've tried every kind of way you can think of to find words to make those plain, make you conscious of it. Now let me try one more time. I've asked you these questions. Who do you know? You tell me something about him who you know that has did any greater works on this earth plane than what Yahweh has done through me. I'll go and take my seat and sat down and shut up and never have nothing more to say. That's right. I won't have no more to say. If you can show me somebody in history, take it as far back or as up or as close up as you want to, it don't make me no difference. Now I'm asking you, see in these things, to pay attention to what I try to tell you from time to time. You understand? Now this is some of the things that you're going to have to do. This is what you'll have to do. You have to unload your mind with all that trash and old satanic influences and doctrine, which all of us have been loaded up with. You get the point? And dump it out of the way. Take it on to the dump. Now, you're not going to get a thing from Yahweh until you do that. I want you to look uh, second chapter of First Corinthians and the last three or four verses there. Now, you tell me somebody that has the ability to do this, and then I'm going and sat down again. All right, read. Get the natural man. But the natural, but the natural, where are you reading? 14th verse, 2nd chapter of 1 Corinthians. Now listen, listen folks, I believe that you better hold that for just a second. You better hold that. The 17th chapter of Acts of the Apostles and the 10th verse. And the brethren immediately sent away Saul and Silas. Now they've had this conclave or this meeting. All the apostles were in attendance. By night unto Berea. So then now they've departed from one another and they sent these away. You understand from the rest of the brethren when the congregation broke up. Now they're fixing to go somewhere else to preach, you see. So now what's happening? Who's coming there went into the synagogue. No, see, we done lost the continuity of thought. Repeat. Uh, and the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by. Read on reader. By night unto by Berea. By night unto Berea. Sorry. <laughs> Who coming there? Who coming there? Went into the synagogue of the Jews. And they went into the synagogue of the Jews, not Gentile. All right. These were more noble. These were more notable. Notable. Than those of Thessalonica. Than those in Thessalonica. Now, you have two epistles here written to the Thessalonians, right? But these and in Berea were more notable than them in Thessalonians. Thessalonia. In that they received. Now, wait a minute now. That's just what I want to get down to, you see. Now, what made them more notable than them at Thessalonica? Read. In that they receive the word. In that they receive the word. With all readiness of mind. With all readiness of mind. 
and search the scriptures daily. Now you see, you won't do that. Now see, you won't do that. See, search the scriptures daily. You'll let somebody come along and tell you something else. See? And let you tell you something. See? For example, you'll let somebody come along and tell you that the church is ruled by tradition. And there's a vast difference between tradition and faith. It didn't say that they search tradition. They search the scriptures. Now look who you got up here. You got the apostles up here preaching. And they searched the scriptures on the apostles to see whether they, whether what they were saying was so or not. Get the point. You won't do that. You let some idiot come along and tell you something that is nowhere in the scriptures. Then here you come dragging that bone in here. Then soon as I tell you something, then you all tore all to pieces. For example, now that idiot in Chicago said that the black man come with the earth 60 trillion years ago. Where do you find that at all in the scriptures? Tell me where you find it at or shut up. Do you see what I mean? Then you want to tell me something else, this one or that one, and the other one said. You understand? Well, where do you find it at in the scriptures? Now listen, folks, this is what the scriptures are. The scriptures are the revelations of Yahweh shown to mankind. Mm -hmm. And the man just wrote down what Yahweh revealed to him. And I mean by looking at it too, by looking at it in a vision. He wrote that down, you see. Now, if the scriptures is coming from Yahweh by inspiration, you understand, and the man is writing this down, then you ought to have sense enough then to search the scriptures. And if it's not in the scriptures, that's how you got in all the trouble that you're in, because it's not in the scriptures. It's not a revelation from Yahweh. Can you see that? Now, I just don't have time to fool with that kind of stuff, see? You get it. Now, you can go back. But the natural name. Now, this is the second chapter of the first epistle to Paul, of Paul to the Corinthians. Corinthians are Grecians. And listen, they were the most notable philosophers there is in the world all right but the natural man now paul is telling him but the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of yahweh now nicodemus was a natural man see and when yahweh or yahshua told him now you must be born again he said now, how can these things be? Can a man enter the second time into, into mother's womb and be born again? And Yahshua the Messiah said, just don't marvel or don't wonder at what I said. You understand, for you must be born again. Now, how do you expect to come in here, you understand, with a lot of carnal-minded junk that you got out there from the devil? You understand. Drag it up in here, and you haven't got no scriptures at all or nothing for it. Then you want to start an argument. Why don't you just take a seat and sit down and hope for the best that Yahweh will reveal something to you? Let me tell you this. Now, the devil had better sense than that to argue around about tradition or something another. He had better sense than that. You want to know, you want to know where it was and how it was. Well, I'll tell you real quick. When he went out here in the wilderness, you understand, to be tempted of the devil 40 days and 40 nights, we're just saying it that way because that's the way it's written in your book. He wasn't tempted, you understand. It would just been better to say tested. He went out there in the wilderness to be tempted of the devil 40 days and 40 nights. 
now listen to what I'm going to say, then you ought to be able to kind of compare one thing with the other. Now the devil would say, it's written. Now here you come, nothing written in the scripture, and you're trying to tell me something about what somebody else, about what some other idiot said. See, you ought at least to do as well as the devil done. Even if you had to mention some misinformation or misinterpretation of a verse, you ought to at least point out something in the book or in the Bible. You see what I mean? But no, you don't do that. You come in and say, uh, talk a whole lot of fool talk. And I've had him say this to me. Now, it sounded wonderful to them, but it was idiotic to me. Said, I'm looking, trying to find the place where I come from. Have you ever, have you ever heard any of them say that? Said, I'm trying to find where I come from. See, who am I and what am I here for? That's not a hard question to answer. You want me to tell you where you come from. I mean, give you the book for it. Now that will save you from further wondering where you come from. Hold your finger on what you got there. 17th, back to the 17th chapter of Acts, read. For in him we live. That's right. For in him we live. Now, where are you reading? 17th chapter, 28th verse. Well, now see, for all you that didn't know that was in there, that's the reason why I asked him to read it. Now, this is a history. But just since it's there in plain words, it's a history. See, we just give it to you. Now, we don't have to resort to that. We can go back here and show that to you. You see, you get the point. What is it you said? For in him we live. For in Yahweh we live. And move. And move. And have our being. Now that's where this thing you've got come from here. See? Read on. Uh, I just lost my screen. There it is. It's back. So as certain as certain also of your off of your own no, where am I at to reader? Just start from the top, Jackie. Okay. See, read on. As certain also of your own. As certain also of your own philosophers or poets. Have said. Have said. For we are also. For we are also. His offspring. Now you see that now. Now anybody capable out there in the world to teach you anything ought to know that. Ought not to have you running around talking about, well, I'm looking to try to find out where I come from. He ain't capable of teaching you nothing. See, you understand. Now, if he don't know where you come from, he don't know where he come from. And it goes without saying, he don't know where he's going to. Is that right? See now. Let's be sensible about some of these things. Think twice before you come up here with that bunch of junk. We're also what? His offspring. We're offspring. John 3.16. And that's the reason why on this chart we have Philo. As in philosophy, as you have there. Philosophy. Pro. See? Genitiveness. You understand, the definition of the word is this, instinctive love for the offspring. Now listen at that. Listen at me to what I'm saying. Now you have take a mother, birds, anything, old hen with some little chickens out here, see? You can go out there and all, when she ain't got no little chickens and all, 
she runs cackling and getting out of the way. But just as soon as she got some little chickens out there, she accused you. Why? Because she loves that offspring. See, the whole thing is exhibited and manifested in nature. You see what I'm talking about? A mother will risk her life for her child. It's just the instinctive love for an offspring, you see. Well, now, if we're the offspring of Yahweh through Elohim, you see, get it now. If that's so, then that's got to be proven. All right, prove it. For Yahweh to love the world. Now, it come from him, and Yahweh so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever. That whosoever. Believeth in him. Believeth in him. Should not perish. Should not perish. But have everlasting life. But have everlasting life. Now that was Yahweh manifesting his instinctive love for his offspring. When he gave him out here on the cross, that whosoever believed in him would not perish. And say, look here, maybe you think that just can't. Try that over again. For Yahweh so loved the world. For Yahweh so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. That he gave his only, his only. I said his only begotten son, and he was the and he was the only begotten son. See, Adam was the son of Yahweh too, but there's a difference there. This is a created son, you see, you understand. The other is the only begotten, and this was the only created. And if you don't think he was a son, look at the third chapter of Luke and the last verse. Adam was a son of God. Now Yahweh so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Now you get this straight, and here's why I called your attention back to it, that whosoever believed in Henry Clifford Kinley, no, or whosoever believed in Elijah, no, or whosoever believed in Moses, no, no, Whosoever believed in Isaiah, no. no. Whosoever believed in Peter, no. Whosoever believed in Mary, no. no. It's not that. Now, do you see that? There's something else you need to stop and think about. Did you know that? Now, they're saying that they have plenitude of power to put you in heaven and all those kinds of things. Fifth chapter of First Corinthians there, see? Now, I want to show you something about that. Now, I haven't forgotten where we was at there in Corinthians, but now what it shows there. I think it's the fifth chapter. Paul says now, it is reported to him by the house of Chloe that there were divisions among them. Mm -hmm. And he said, I partly believe it. You understand? Now listen to what I'm saying. Wherefore, one of you say that I am of Cephas, that's Peter. Another one was saying, well, I'm not of Peter, even though Pope Paul did say that at the International Council of Churches headquarters in Geneva here not long ago, he said, we're Peter's. Now it says that, wherefore, that one of you says I am of Peter, or Cephas you have there. Another one says, well, I'm not. Now these are divisions among them. Another one says, well, I'm of Apollos. Apollos was from Alexandria, Egypt, you see. And he didn't know any further than the baptism of John or the baptism of repentance. But he was an eloquent and a mighty man in the scriptures. Now you're talking about scriptorial oratory. That boy was eloquent. So much so that they were saying, I'm of Paul and I'm of Peter, I'm of Cephas. 
and of, uh, Apollo, and of Apollo, of Apollos, Cephas, and Peter. Now then, the apostle wants to know who they are. He wants to know who Peter is, and he wants to know who he is, and he wants to know who Apollos is. All right, read. Who then is Paul? Who then is Paul or Saul? Okay, we should read to the end of the page and then our time is up. Okay. Okay. Who then is Apollo? And who is Apollo? But ministers by whom you believe. Mm -hmm. They are just ministers by whom you believe. Even as. Even as. Even okay. as Yahweh gave to Thank every you. man. Now listen, and even as Yahweh, what? Gave to every, gave to man. every man. Read it again, Doc. Who then is Paul and who is Apollo? See now, when you're trying to tell me something about somebody, you see what I'm talking about and how mighty they are. Get the point. I want to know who they are. And this is something else I want to know. And you'll read it down a little further. It's a question, see? Read on, Doc. But ministers. Okay, so we can send up says by ministers by whom you believe. So mm -hmm. um, so we're gonna uh, this isn't page, but it's it's by ministers by whom you believe. So I'll keep okay. this here. So, I don't know how many pages we've gone. I don't need well, it, just, just say reader by ministers by whom you believe and we'll know where to store it. Mm -hmm. Mine, mine's got pages and we're on page 13. Page 13. Okay. So I'll just remember okay. that. That's what we Thank left you. the last lecture at 13. <laughs> yeah, three and one is four. Okay, so we got a moderator. We sincerely thank everyone for their participation thank you. today. We hold classes Tuesday through Saturday, 11 a.m. until 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 a.m. until 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 12 a.m. until 2 a.m. in Malaysia, 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. in England. Let us stand in our heart and mind for the doxology, taken from the last two verses of the book of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time and now and ever. Let us all say, Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Have a nice your day, baby brother. Awesome class. Praise you. Yes, it was. It was excellent. Oh, excellent. Wonderful. I was just. Ooh, it was just like music. Edif to you. 